everyone. My name's Laura and you're watching my channel So Very Laura. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time here and welcome back if you're an existing subscriber. And on that note, hello to all my lovely new subscribers. I've had quite a little flurry of subscribers since I um, launched my So Frugal Options video, um, which I think went out about 10 days ago now. Uh, so thank you all for subscribing and I hope you enjoy um, my future content. It's really lovely to have you along on my sewing journey. So in today's um, vlog, I'm going to show you what I actually made in the end for Sew Frugal and also um, all the other things I made in March. There was a bit of an overlap between Sew Frugal and Sew Yellow for Endo in terms of makes. Uh, and then I made one other thing as well. So I thought I'd just show you everything in one go. So let's start with um, So Frugal then. And thank you to those of you who left comments on my um, plans video saying what you would most like to see made up. Um, and I think the majority of people said that they'd really like to see the um, Mila Myla bomber jacket which is from Tiana's closet so I'll pop a pick in here and you weren't the only ones because that's what I really wanted to make as well um, but when I got down to it you will remember I said that I wanted to do it in part by repurposing this um, quite heavy scuba fabric skirt that I've got and I've got loads and loads and loads of this fabric but you also need um, ribbing to go on the cuffs, down the collar and round the bottom of the waistband and as it turned out I just didn't really have enough and I could have done it in navy but then I've got a black zip that will work and I actually also thought that navy probably wouldn't go as well with this because I think fundamentally the underlying background colour is black so it is going to get made and since I can now buy um, some ribbing to make that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some more ribbing and I am going to make that hopefully at some point this year. Whether it'll get done this side of summer, I don't know, but it is definitely happening. So fear not, if that's what you wanted to see, um, that is definitely going to happen in my um, future sewing. So that was the first thought that I had and what I wanted to do. So then I went to plan B and plan B was going to be the um, Solange, Solange blouse um, which was from Initiativa Hantel Arbeit which is a German channel and I'll pop a pick in here but it kind of reminded me of what you'd get if you crossed a kind of button down blouse with the sagebrush top because it has this ruffle, as you'll see, all the way along. And I thought this might be a really cost effective way to see if I'd like something like the sagebrush top by Friday Pattern Company, because I've never bought it because I've never been sure about the ruffle. So printed off the pattern pieces, stick them all together. So you can see here's one of them. So this is um, the front decided what size I want to make and then I got a bit thrown because um, you'll see here there is a line. Can you see it's labelled 1.1 and 1.2? So 1.2 is, is the lower bit of the blouse and if you want to do it with the kind of long, um, almost like a peplum, you can cut that off there if you want and then put the peplum on the bottom, or you can make it a bit longer. But here, this, this line here, is where you would trim it in order to um, cut it in half, and that's where you would put the ruffle. But what I was really unclear about, it does talk about normally um, seam allowances being one centimetre, um, and then there's a bit where she talks about fitting the blouse and she says, if you're really not sure, um, cut it out with one and a half um, centimetre seam allowance. Um, and then she also says, 
if you don't want to bother with the ruffle going across it and there are other bits of pattern a bit like this one like the sleeves just use it all in one go and don't bother cutting it out there which makes me think that actually it probably doesn't have seam allowances added because if it had seam allowances added there and then you didn't use it you'd end up with a different shape armhole obviously so I kind of thought mm, I suspect you've got to add seam allowances but I wasn't completely sure and I'm sure it's not because the instructions were in German I think it just didn't say it and by this time it was I think it was Saturday this last Saturday just gone the 30th and I thought I need not to be doing something that I'm really not sure about when I want to sew them something up for Sunday so I am going to try it, but I'm going to try it on something like a duvet cover first so that I don't mess up some really good fabric. So I ruled that one out for now as well. OK, so that's what I didn't make. So you're all probably thinking, come on, Laura, get to the point. What did you make? Excuse the rustling. So I submitted two entries which you might have seen already if you follow me on Instagram. So shall we start with what Olivia is wearing? Olivia, come hither. Here we go. So I will put some pictures up as well. Oh, let me just tilt the camera around so you can see. Excuse the bits on the floor behind. So you'll see Olivia is wearing um, a dress and um it is the great british sewing bee drapey knit dress which i did mention in my um plans vlog or options vlog um for the 22nd and it's gonna be a massive crash in a minute as everything falls over um yeah and this is a free pattern that you can get if you sign up to craft world and i found it on a blog from Laura who is so different who now has her own pattern range saying there weren't any instructions or any guidance on sizing so she'd got a, a blog post on it and I thought I was going to have to follow that but when I actually downloaded it I did find um, instructions only three sides of A4 and a bit sketchy but it does have sizing on and it did have some basic instructions. So I decided I was going to go ahead and make up this. And you will see, I have finally, 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 those of you who've been um, watching me for a long time will remember that I've kept getting this scuba out of my stash and saying, I'm going to sew it, I'm going to sew it, and then putting it back. And last year I thought I was going to make it. And um, the dress that I was trying to make, which was a free pattern, um, didn't print out properly and I couldn't get it to work and then it was in my five fabrics I want to show up hogs in my um, fabric stash which I'll link down below as well which is a vlog I did about a month ago finally I have sewn it up and I am really chuffed so what did I think of it so the fabric um, is a scuba which is Lady McElroy and it's called Brush Strokes and I got it from Material Girl Laura who sadly are no longer trading uh, but it's a relatively light and drapey scuba and obviously doesn't have a whole heap of stretch and the pattern recommends things like Ponty things that don't have much stretch sorry I'll just come around so you can see me again properly um, apologies, I've got my little notebook, so I keep looking down. Um, so I measured myself again and decided, given the amount of ease, that I would make a medium, which was a 12 to 14. You might argue at the moment my hips are more like a 16, but there was a massive amount of ease and I did what I normally do and I held the tape measure around me at my widest points and there was a lot of ease. So I thought I'm gonna go for it and I'm gonna make the medium up. So I did. And um, I think their fabric estimate said 1.9 meters of fabric if you've got something like 150, 160 wide and that was pretty much right. I had 2.13 meters of the scuba and I've got maybe 20 centimeters left of the full width um, and then kind of various bits of scraps so I was pretty pleased I thought that was a good use of it really um, and it is directional 
um, this. It took me a while to work it out, but it is directional. But the pattern pieces are really weird. So I cut them out on, um, printed them off on A4 and then stick them together. But for example, this is the left front. So you can see it is, if I scoot back slightly, you can see. So that's a pocket piece. And then it goes all the way around up to the top like that. And then you've got this kind of pointy bit here and the fold and there's your grain line. So it's six. Where's my grain line? That way. So, and then you've got a fairly similar one for the right front. And then you've got this centre front bit as well. So you can see again, massively long um, kind of pointy bit at the top. And then it comes down and then you've got separate pocket pieces which you sew onto the back and then line them up with the front pocket pieces. So it is a bit confusing because the pockets belong to the opposite side. So there's the left front piece and that is the front of the pocket. So it is slightly confusing um, till you get the hang of it. And I didn't find that sometimes, particularly on the sleeves, I wasn't sure all the markings matched up exactly, but I just kind of went with it and it was all fine in the end. So you'll see, and I will put some photos in of me twirling about as well. Um, it's got these pockets here, these kind of deep pockets, and they go on a line up. So you don't really see them until you put your hands in them. Let me turn it down again so you can see. There you go. So you can see there's the pockets. Um, and the instructions are pretty good on the pockets. They tell you to understitch and everything. OK, so I tried to put the camera back up again and promptly switched off the vlog. Not great. Anyway, I'm back. So, yeah, the bit that really threw me and the reason for the subtitle of my thumbnail, why I'm never going on the sewing bee, was the neckline. Because it has this fold in it. Oops, let me find the... Let me find a bit. So you've got this fold here, and what you actually have to do is you fold it, and obviously you can't fold it right over like that because if you did, you'd have the wrong side showing. So you kind of fold it in on itself like that, and then what you do is this bit kind of goes round and attaches to the right front neckline. So hopefully that makes sense but you can see here but when I did it the first time I ended up with this bit sticking it and I haven't realized that it has to go kind of all the way over like that and fold in and so the first time I tacked it it tells you to baste it in place and then you put on the facing of which more in a second but the first time I got it wrong and I had this bit sticking it and I kept thinking I'm sure that's not right I'm sure that's not right and it wasn't and then I fiddled around with it on the paper and then it clicked and then it was fine. And But I knew it wasn't fine because I couldn't get, there's a facing on this and I couldn't get the facing to fit. And I'd kind of thought it was a bit strange anyway. It just looked odd. You know when something's not right, but you can't work out why it's not right anyway. That's why it wasn't right. So managed to get it right, basted it in. Um, facing then went in fine um, and I did a combination of using my sewing machine for the pockets and the neckline and the facing, putting the facing in and then I just used my overlocker for all the, I, I, did, um, I did these seams with Maraflex as well because I wasn't sure how accurate I'd have to be and if I got it wrong so I thought I'd better just use it um, with Maraflex and um, then I had a chance to unpick it more easily. But all my side seams and my extra sleeve bits are put on with my overlocker, which worked fine and sped it up no end. Because by this time, it's kind of like seven, eight o'clock last night and I was just starting to think this is not going to work. This is not going to work. Then I had a fiddle with the paper pattern pieces and then it all worked perfectly, so it was fine. So what do I think? Well, when I made it up last night and I thought I'm not going to take a photo of me in it for so frugal, I'm just going to put it on Olivia, take the photo and then I'll get some photos and try it on in the morning. 
and I didn't really like it. I wasn't convinced and I sort of thought, I'll put the photo up of the photo I took last night and I just thought, I'm really not sure about this. And then I put it on um, this morning to get some photos and actually I really quite like it. I like the style on me. I like the fact that it goes in a bit after the hips. It's got this kind of cocoon feel to it. It's really comfy. It's kind of secret pyjamas. It doesn't have any zips or buttons or anything like that. The only thing that is really annoying me, and this may not come as much of a surprise, because <laughs> I think, you know, your team bias binding or your team facing, and I've never really minded facings before, but I don't like this one. Now, to be fair, when I put it on, I haven't pressed it and I have now pressed it and it's sitting, it's sitting fine. It's, it's understitched and everything. And I need to catch it down at the shoulder seams, which is what it suggests you do. But when I went downstairs to take the photographs, I could feel the whole thing kind of dragging down a bit at the front and it felt like it was kind of doing this. And yeah, I'm really not, I'm really not sure. So I will catch it down lightly at the shoulder seams and I'll try and live with it and see what I think. But it might be that that comes off and I replace it with some bias binding because I'm really not that convinced. So we'll see. Um, yeah, pattern instructions are OK, um, but not, yeah, not perfect, but OK. Um, some of the matching, as I said, I struggled with a little bit. Um, and the only other thing I would say is that it never mentions in the pattern, it never mentions these sleeve add-ons once, um, which I kind of thought was interesting. And in fact, the picture of the pattern, which I'll pop up somewhere, doesn't have those on. And I think if I make it again, which I actually might, I might make it in something like a plain Ponty Roma, maybe something like a bright red or a bright blue, I might not put these additional sleeves on because then I think I could probably wear it with a sweater underneath it in the winter um, and that might create a different look and I think also if I made it in a plain fabric it might highlight the fold thing around the neck a bit better so yeah we got there in the end and I'm really happy with it but yes there were times yesterday my um it's not a Fitbit, it's a Garmin I've got. It was kind of showing that I'd sort of hit my intensity minutes and all I was doing was sitting at my desk sewing. It's like, you've hit your intensity minutes for the week. And it's kind of like, that's because I'm really stressed trying to sew this. But anyway, all fine in the end. And I'm really happy to have got the scuba sewn up. Okay, so that was entry number two, actually. Entry number one was this hoodie that I, I am wearing. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will have also seen this uh, posted last weekend as well as this weekend, because this was a joint entry for both So Frugal 24, because I've used a free pattern, and also So Yellow for Endo, run by um, the lovely Jess over at So What If I Sew. Uh, because it has these little mustard cats on it. So um, I'll pop a picture in um, of me wearing it. But if I just come a little bit closer to the camera, you can see the pattern. So you've got these mustard bits in the cats and some of the cats are completely mustard. So that qualified it for So Yellow for Endo. So I made this right at the beginning of March. Um, uh, so I got the fabric from Higgs and Higgs. It's this lovely fleecy um French Terry um and it's the peekaboo adult sweatshirt pattern which is a free pattern and you can make it either as a sweatshirt or you can make it as a hoodie um and there will be more I love it I never got my seam ripper out once I made a size medium and the fit is pretty good I think the only thing I think I would do if I stand up and put my arm out you can maybe see there you go I think next time I'll probably lengthen it by about an inch because the sleeves are fine, but I kind of keep doing this and therefore I think I'll be better if I just lengthen them a fraction next time I make it, but there will be a next time. It's a really lovely pattern. So if you're looking for um, a sweatshirt pattern or a hoodie pattern, I could really, really recommend it. 
So that was my other entry for So Frugal and my first entry for So Yellow for Endo. So I'd like to finish in terms of So Frugal by saying thank you so much to Ruan, who is at the Yorkshire So Girl, and um, Sam, who is at Frugalissima, um, over on YouTube, and they've got the same channel names over here on YouTube. Sorry, did I say on, on YouTube? I meant on Instagram. Um, thank you to them for running it for the fourth year. And also thank you to all the lovely sponsors for that. And also in terms of So Yellow for Endo, thank you to Jess um, for doing all the running of it. I know they had an absolute bumper year this year for it. And also thank you to the sponsors of So Yellow for Endo. But I did have two of the makes for So Yellow for Endo. So let's get on and I will show you those. So you'll see that Olivia has got changed and I'll come to what she's wearing in a moment. But in terms of my So Yellow for Endo plans, I knew when I filmed my vlog, which I'll link to down below, that I already had this one in the bag because I made it right at the start of March. So I knew I'd got at least one entry. And then what I really, really, really wanted to make, she says something like the Spice Girl, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. So what I really wanted to make was this, um, this blouse, which is blouse, short sleeve blouse 104 from a Burda magazine and this is Burda from February of this year and I really wanted to make this it's got these kind of waist darts there and these floaty sleeves and I just think it's really pretty what you can't see on the picture is it's got a zip up the back as well so I wanted to make that and um, I did actually get as far as tracing out the pattern pieces and I knew it might be tight, but I wanted to make it in this fabric because it has these beautiful yellow flowers on it. And this is fabric that is left over from the dress that I made for a friend's son's wedding, um, which was in July last year. And it's a fabric godmother fabric called, I think it's Linii, and it's this is a cotton lawn and um, the dress I made was the Fabric Godmother P and it had just come out at the time. So I'll pop a pic in there of the dress um, and I'll link to the vlog about it below. So if you're a new subscriber and you want to see it, um, you can head over and watch that. And by the way, in case you didn't know, I've changed my um, YouTube and Instagram names to so very Laura. I was the Carpe DM Stitcher for a little while and then I changed it because I kind of thought, that makes me feel like I'm sewing in a rush and it's about the number of things I get made. And it's not. It's about creating a wardrobe that makes me happy. So don't be confused. It's still me. So, yeah. So that's what I wanted to make it in. And I knew it might be a bit tight in terms of fitting um, this um, the pattern onto this fabric. And it was. I couldn't quite do it. So that one was out. And... Then I did drag out some of my other fabrics that I had yellow in and decided they might be a bit stiff because they were mostly kind of quilting cotton weight. So I kind of thought, mm, not really um, sure that I want to use those in the end. Um, so gave up on that idea and then wondered about using this one. But I didn't, I wasn't really that convinced that that was yellow. That was about the nearest I could find on it. And I think that might be more cream. So I don't think Jess would have been that precious about it. But anyway, I decided I wasn't going to do that. So that was the end of the blouse plan. So I went on to do um, the Molly Top, the Sew Over It Molly Top, which is something that I have wanted to make for ages. And it very nearly went on my Mate 9. In the end, I didn't put it on. Um, but what I'd shown you was um, this fabric with these beautiful gold flowers on it. And I was going to make um, the main body of the top in this because I only had a metre of it. And then I was going to put um, sleeves in of plain navy jersey and a kind of curry colour, this kind of colour. And in the end, I decided that. I didn't think the curry colour 
match the gold well enough. And actually, neither did the Navy. Um, so I kind of thought, mm, I'm not really, I'm not really that convinced. And half wondered about making the shorter uh, version of the top without the longer sleeves. But in the end, I got it out of a meter exactly, just managed it, just squeezed it out. And I made a size 14. And you can see it here. So the original intention had been to make the molly out of this top um, on its own and not to have to um, do anything different with the sleeves. So I was actually really pleased that I'd managed to do it. If I'd made any larger than a 14, I wouldn't have got it out of the fabric. It was absolutely corner to corner um, and a bit of patent Tetris, so it wouldn't have happened. I still need to hem it and hem the sleeves. Um, so that still needs doing. So I'll pop a pick up of me in this version so you can see what you think. Um, so my feeling was I made a size 14 and thought it might come up big and actually it didn't. It does fit me, but it's quite snug. And I really didn't like the photos of me in this at all. And it was for me a bit of a... How can I put it? A bit of a wake up call that maybe my body doesn't look like I sometimes think my body does, even though I do take my measurements. So, yeah, I I don't think I look terrible. And I am a great believer in you do you and I'll do me. But for me, I have always known that there are things that I can't wear because of my body shape. So, for example, I have shoulders that resemble um ski slopes at Val d'Isere. I can't therefore really wear strappy tops, they just fall off. That's fine, that's part of me, so I tend to avoid strappy tops. But what I'm finding now is that things I like and enjoy wearing I can't currently wear, and I'm kind of struggling with that. So I am making a concerted effort to, I don't know whether it's lose weight or just tone up a bit, but just so I feel better in my own skin. and. You know, as I say, I think size is a huge personal issue. So I'm certainly not, you know, saying what anybody else should do. But that photo just made me think, OK, I'm not particularly happy. And I also made at an absolute last minute, and you won't have seen this before. So Olivia is modelling this. And this is another sew over it, Molly. Um, and I won't show you the back because I really messed up the neckline. Um, and I made this entirely on my overlocker and it's in this fabric. I don't know if you can see, I'll put it, I'll put a close up in of the, um, fabric. Yeah, but it's got all these various bottles on it, all of which have got these kind of shades of yellow and orange. Well, not all, but most. And I suddenly thought, oh, that'd be really fun to make one in this. However, the fabric is, it is kind of stretchy, but it's not as stretchy as that one. And when I tried it on, it really is at the moment too tight for me. So I'm going to hang on to it for now and see if it becomes a bit looser once I have been um, taking care of myself a little bit better than I have been. Um, so I'm going to hang on to it for now and see if that changes. Um, and I hope it does because I do quite like it and it really suits Olivia. So, yeah. So we'll see. So that was my third entry for So Yellow for Endo. The interesting thing is that I'm not sure whether I like the top on me anyway, even allowing for the fact that the 16 might have looked a little bit better on me. I might try it in a 16 and see, but I'm more minded to hold on and see if my body shape changes a little bit and then make a decision about the molly top but it is interesting that it's one of those patterns that I actually really really liked and now I've made it I'm really not sure and I'm not I can't work out what it is about it that I'm not as keen on as I thought I would be so yeah we'll see but that's fine we make things that's why we sew we make things we don't always like what we've made um and and that's absolutely fine uh, and I will just mention quickly one other thing that I made in March, but I don't have it with me. And that is 
a um I'll put a picture in. It's another Waves and Wild hot coffee and it's made in a pink cable fabric. It's that cable fabric that a lot of people have um, been using. The Northern Soul Sisters did a vlog about what they each made with different colours. And I got it from Pound Fabrics along with a whole load of different colours. The reason I don't have it with me is because I made it for my mum. Um, but it is absolutely identical in terms of sizing and everything to um, a lilac -y one that I made her before and a lilac -y one that I made for me. So I'll pop a pick in of me wearing that. It's absolutely identical. And what I do on that one, rather than just hemming it, is I create a faux band with the overlocker around the bottom so that it looks like it's got a banding on, but it's actually just a deep hem sewn with the overlocker. Um, and I don't have it because what I did was I went to stay with my mum um, on the back of a work trip at the beginning of March and I took my overlocker with me and I'd already cut the top out and because I can make it completely on the overlocker I sewed it up while I was there and I left it with her so that was great worked out really well and she's really happy with it she loves her purple one and now she's got a new one to love as well. So that's it from me um, for this week. I will see you again very soon in terms of upcoming vlogs. I have got a bit of a mini haul to show you. If you've watched um, Sam Sequin Gurley or Jess So What If I Sew's vlogs about um, the Sewing for Pleasure show, which was the one at the NEC where they did the catwalk, you might know or you might have seen um, and also Michelle, the menopausal sewer, that I was there and I did meet up with them. Um, but because there have been so many vlogs out about that, I haven't I haven't actually done one, but I did buy some things. So I thought I would just show you those coupled with um, some of the bits and pieces that I've also bought. So I'll show you those in a vlog and I might team that up with my plans for April and a little bit of a life update which might impact on what I'm going to be sewing. Um, so that might be either one or two vlogs depending how it goes but I'm not working this week which is brilliant because it means I've got lots of time to do some planning for this month and also for May probably I'll probably do the two together and also sorry I'm looking at my notes I have got a collaboration coming up. Um, with someone lovely who I suspect quite a few of you already subscribed to and hopefully we will be announcing that um, in the next couple of weeks as well. We're having a chat about it um, later this week so that's going to be great. So that's all from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this vlog please give me a like and leave me a comment. I know I'm a little bit behind on replying to comments at the minute. It's been a weird couple of weeks for reasons you'll find out in my April plans vlog. Um, and But I will catch up, I promise. And if you're not already a subscriber, please do click the um, subscribe button if you want to hear more from me. And if you click the little notification bell, then you'll be notified every time I launch a vlog so you don't miss a thing. I'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye for now.